Hey folks, Jonathan here. Alright, so let me see. Engine is together except for number five piston. Everything's honed. Uh, rings are on. I have not torqued the rod bolts yet, but we'll get them. Uh, getting ready to take, we're going to take the radiator out here shortly. And I got the front bar off because we're going to have to do some repairs on it and uh, clean a few things up yet. And uh, everything's looking good, piston wise. Everything went in good, it's rolling over good. The heads, I've got four exhaust valves in each head, waiting on the intake valves. Uh, we've got the valve covers cleaned up, the intake cleaned up, uh, the valley pan cover. And let me see. All right, so we got the oil pump we're working on. We're working on the uh, the filter, the uh, well, the windage tray, and oil pan's about cleaned up. And now I just wanted to show you a few things here. Here is the oil filter. You can see a bunch of gunk on top. We'll pull this out and we'll see what it looks like. Just gummed up black hole. Smells rough too. Um, and you can tell it's been 50 years since this thing's ran. So anyway, we'll get this all cleaned up. That way we can uh, maybe get a little paint on it and get the uh, filter in it and get it sealed up so we can actually filter some oil. Alright? Alright folks, carburetor time. We're going to tear it down and let it soak because uh, I think it's going to be pretty rough. but. Uh, someone was actually trying to start that thing. Uh, you can see it is filled full of crap. And luckily the choke was closed, so the primaries are not that bad. The secondaries are packed full of stuff. Dirt daubers, mud daubers. Uh, set with no air cleaner. And the way these air cleaners are made, because this engine's so tall, it's a low profile, so it goes off to the side. So we're going to go ahead and get, we're going to blow this thing out first with the air hose and then go from there uh, it don't actually well there's water in it but it actually don't look terrible from the bottom side uh, I think the secondaries are stuck on it primaries are are loose yeah so that's not bad and we'll suck it see if we can get it taken care of yeah still a bunch of crud in there all right all right not terrible inside we got water and nasty crap and a lot of dirt and dust and uh, accelerator pump <laughs> I've never seen that before so there's nothing on it hey, whether it was rubber well I'm assuming it was probably rubber and not leather but I think leather would probably outlast the rubber but it's completely disintegrated missing uh, floats look good I don't think they're full of anything he's run two different floats because the back secondary shaft runs through there and it's on a vacuum and uh, so you got actually two sets of uh, butterflies you got the upper set for the vacuum and then the other but they are uh, both stuck so hopefully soaking that will take care of that we're going to pull the uh, the base off and all the jets out and you know a lot of people think these are rock testers this is not a rock tester carburetor this is actually a Carter carburetor I think it says on it somewhere patent numbers yeah, there you go. Carter YCFB. Uh, made in hmm, USA. Should know that. Matter of fact, this was made 20 miles from where I'm at right here. And uh, the Carter Weber factory is, is, is pretty close to me. So, uh, anyway, we'll get to taking apart and start getting this thing soaking. All right. All right, so we've got the carburetor taken down. We're going to put it in a caustic soda tank, let it soak. And then uh, probably open it back up tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's Labor Day. So, Unfortunately, piston and valves won't be here tomorrow. The piston will be here Tuesday. Uh, it's a shame that it's just right down the road from me, but I've got no access to it. So. Uh, we could finish the bottom end up get the pan back on and all that good stuff, but That's just the way that goes, but uh 
I think we've got enough to do to get ready before the valves get here. So we'll definitely have it running this coming week. And I uh, don't see any reason why not anyway. So uh, uh, just going to invest a little more time in it. Well, invest time because I hadn't really invested any time in it before. Uh, just to tear down, which wasn't, you know, wasn't a big deal. So, all right. All right, folks, we're moving right along. As you can see, we've got the radiator out. You can see how packed up dirty this is. But uh, this is not from oil or anything like that. This is from terrible roads, probably dirt roads. And uh, everything looks pretty good. Here is part of my biggest fear is going to be these hoses. Uh, I might get these hoses made. i got a friend of mine in a, in a hydraulic shop that I think can do little ones like that. So that might get made. Uh, fuel line is right here and missing there you know rotted away years ago so I have no idea that fuel pump I'm sure is no good now the last one I done I took the arm off of one of these and put it on a 69 or 73 Ford diesel fuel pump <clears throat> it was the IDI transfer pump and it worked fine I'm still using it on the other car matter of fact but I'm not sure what we're gonna do yet on this uh, we'll start cleaning some stuff up up here and um, may or may not pop that uh, pulley off. What we got here? We got pieces of belt still stuck in the pulley. Uh, this thing definitely has been a long time since it's been started. So, like I said, everything's about rotted off of it. And transmission lines don't don't feel bad, but I, they worry me. I'm afraid the pressure. I think that's going to be my biggest fallback on this whole ordeal is transmission. Uh, whether it's going to be any good or not and whether it's going to pour fluid or not that's our big question so uh, i totally understand why cold war went to the what they went to but there's a problem when it comes to this uh putting a stick shift in it now i've got my other one that's got the stick shift but here's the the problem they made 4071 of these they also ran these engines in packards from 55 and 56. i did not realize this they did not put no stick shifts in so I think only like 400 of these, maybe 900 something. But anyway, had uh, stick shifts. So that makes that bell housing, that flywheel, very scarce. And I do not have one. And when you find them, they're $500 for the bell housing, 500 for the uh, flywheel. So you know, we're, it's not something that I can just swap real quick. It's a whole lot rarer engine than, let's say, a, a you know 259 or even a 289 uh, Studebaker engine they're pretty common so that leaves us with uh, the radiator we're hoping the water pumps okay I mean it turns good and all uh, I might order a kit for it and just save it I've got another one I can rebuild and then swap them out if I had to it's not a hard swap on these cars uh, radiator right here is where it was frozen pushed out now we're gonna fix that and hope there's no other issues. I mean, we'll do a pressure test on it and try it out. Don't look terrible in there. So maybe it'll be okay. So anyway, that's where we're at. We'll get this soldered up. We're split the same. That's all it did was split the same, so it's not a problem. Get the overflow line unclogged. There's mud daubers and everything. And of course, get this hose off that uh, is as hard as a rock should come right off they don't offer these hoses we'll actually grab the one that they sent me and make sure it's right yeah I believe this is it uh, it's a you know flex hose but lengthwise and uh, diameter wise I think it'll be fine so got that problem solved now we got to do the top radiator hose also and uh, it's the car had a flex one on it and I've got a flex one on my other car so I can get a measurement on length and uh, probably be okay on that yeah, just a lot more cleaning. Uh, we've got a lot cleaned up and a lot ready. Uh, hopefully, this will be here Tuesday, and then hopefully the valves will be here Wednesday or Thursday. And then we can just uh, pop this thing all back together and have it ready running for a, a good video Friday or Saturday. All right. All right, folks, it's Tuesday. This will be here today. I'm going to run and grab a uh, inch and three-quarter uh, expansion plug, freeze plug, whatever you want to call it. Uh, some people don't know that they wasn't put there for expansion or freezing. It was actually put there to get the sand out of the casting. But 
anyway not a not a big issue it works out that they usually work or they don't always work but sometimes they do so anyway we're going to get that taken care of and we should have the let me see the piston in the pan on oil pump uh start putting the front of the engine back together uh or well we may wait till we get the heads on for that but anyway we should have all the bottom in and all done today and then uh I have taken the gas line loose and blew through it. It won't blow through, so we're going to pull the tank. But uh, I'm going to wait until I get to get most everything done underneath, so I can drop this thing down. Because uh, as you can imagine, the back's really low right now. So anyway, that's the plan, and uh, there's our heads. Just waiting on the valves for them. Now I'm hoping they'll be here within, let's say by Thursday, Friday at the latest. And that might give me time to get it together for maybe a video for the weekend. But we'll see how that works out. And uh, anyway, that's where we're at. And we're going to keep rolling along. All right. All right, folks. We got our piston in. Looks good. We'll clean it up and do some measuring on it. And see if we can get it swapped over. All right. All right, folks. Uh, piston is in. Uh, it's looking good. I got a lot of this cleaned up here while I was waiting on the piston today. Uh, of course, it didn't come in until pretty late, but anyway, it's on and in, and all the rods are torqued, oil pump's back on, and uh, so now I'm working on the gasket, but I've run out of daylight. Anyway, well, my point is, is I'm going to quit for the night, and I'm going to start in the morning. And also here, I, you can see it, the carburetor's all together and ready to go, and uh, I don't think there's going to be any issues with it. Uh, should work really good. All right. Okay, so the uh, the bottom end is back together. Oil pan's on, motor mount. Uh, kind of funny. I want to show you something here. So in 19, I think it was 65, GM had a recall and had some problems with their motor mounts. And it may have been before that, but I know at least it by 65. So the engine mounts would break and they had a, a cable set up that went around your upper A-frame, uh, the rod that ran through your upper A-frame and uh, where your upright frame bushings went, but it had a cable that went around it and that kept your engine from flipping up. And I just thought it was funny that this ground cable, which these things are strong, is actually located in a spot where if the motor mount broke, it would work. But not only that, it's pretty short. It's not real tight, but it's pretty short. But the motor mounts on this thing are the same style as what the GM was, so there's no safeties on them. So if they do break, they the engine's going to raise up, but I guess that, that's probably why they put that cable in the location they put it, which was kind of neat. Uh, hadn't seen that before. So, Anyway, uh, starter's on. I uh, had to, the lower back portion of the bell housing back on. Got the uh, oil pan all tied up and done, and uh, the pump. Everything's torqued, pistons, rings, everything's done in it. Uh, working on master cylinder right now. Uh, got the old one off. And I'm getting ready to stick the new one on. And I'm not going to hook it up yet. And I think I'm going to leave it off for a little bit. What I'm going to do is pull the front wheels and blow back through the lines. I don't trust the, the brake lines. So as long as I can get the lines unhooked up here where the rubber hoses are going, i got new rubber lines. If I can get them loose, then I'm going to go ahead and uh, blow back through and shoot some brake cleaner back through because the fitting that went into here was kind of gummy and this thing stuck in and I mean it's shot it's just uh there's no chance it's for it so anyway that's the plan and uh, we're going to blow out the brake system and then uh or clean out the brake system and then we'll start hooking things back up all right folks got the valves in and got them all lapped and together and ready to go so the heads are ready to go on uh let me see I got to finish up the fuel pump I hadn't done that yet and the valves come in and I got kind of excited about getting them in there and getting that done. So uh, anyway, that's where we're at and we're going to uh, go ahead and post this video and we'll keep rolling on it and should be starting it up here. This is uh, Thursday. No, this is Wednesday. This is Wednesday. So I got tomorrow, uh, Friday morning, I got to go do a haul uh, and then uh, I'm hoping it don't pull into Saturday. I hope we can have this thing at least running, started and all that happy stuff by 
by Friday and I can get a video posted but I don't want to uh, I'm not going to be driving it around or anything without any brakes so De definitely not around here and definitely not an automatic so we'll see how it works out but uh, anyway appreciate everybody watching until next time bye